Alright, even though I'm in the middle of shooting another video, hence the motherboard parts off to the side, uh, I thought I'd do a quick unboxing type video. Well, it's really more for like a first impressions video on uh, this Fluke uh, 17B Plus multimeter. Uh, the Plus, from what I've read, the main differences between the 17B and the Plus is that the screen is much larger on the Plus and I believe they enhance the capacitor test so it can do up to a thousand mics from 100 I think those are the only main differences now if you don't know what the Fluke 17B is there's uh, you know Dave Jones has a great video on it a couple videos I think I think he's got a review and a teardown on it and it's basically an international very cost optimized multimeter that has pretty much everything you need for electronics work except for well basic electronics work except for I don't think it has true RMS that's the one thing that it's like missing but you know that's not a big deal for me so this is I bought it from Amazon and this is what it shipped in this kind of like international tape that I've seen before I don't know if this is actually from India or from China I think the bees are from both. I don't know if this is going to even penetrate it. Oh, 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 okay. Making progress. Huh. Does actually have a box in here. I wasn't sure if it was just going to be the parts sitting inside. That answers my question of where it's from. All right. Yeah, it does say a thousand mic on it, and it is a B. Oh, not for sale outside of China. The funny thing is, I bought this off Amazon with Prime shipping. Like it's actually shipping from Amazon, so <laughs> I guess they condone it. Uh, I'm kind of curious to see if they've taken out any of the stuff from the uh, packaging. My cat is meowing at the window. Uh, mainly the probes and the temperature probe. Uh, my understanding is that some people receive the 17B without the probe. So let's see what we've got. This is the first multimeter I've actually bought new aside from like my cheap ass $20 one. I don't know if I mentioned it, but this was $111, I believe. So we've got the manual, which does, I think, have English at the back. Maybe not. Nope, no English. And warranty card, I believe, or maybe a certification certificate. Compliance stuff. Calibration practices. Probably product, yeah, product guide. That might be interesting to look through. And the multimeter. Oh, well, yeah, it does actually have the uh, thermal couple, which is cool. And this. Oh, these are. Covers? Safety covers? Oh yeah, yeah, they're the little pinprick covers. I wonder what these are actually called. I don't know what the proper term for these is. And cables. Cat 2, 1000 volts. They say fluke on them. Uh, I actually already ordered some Probe Master ones. I'm waiting for them. I, I do already have a pair of Probe Master ones, but I figure I'd get another, another pair for this guy. And the multimeter. Now I'm going to do a quick check with my um, DMM Check Plus. Uh, I've had this on for a little bit, like 10 minutes or something. I know it should warm up longer. This is somewhat cool. It was outside. So take any readings with a grain of salt. I just want to do like a basic 
does this thing work check on this. So don't be too concerned if it looks really out of cow because like I said this thing's this thing's pretty cool. So I just need some probes that clip on to something. I got some cheap uh, test clip ones. I think they have the little little grabbers. They're very cheap. These are like 99 cents. So let's just see if it powers on. It should have batteries. Oh, it's alive. Backlight. I don't know which one's easier to see on the camera. I think probably with the backlight off. And DC, millivolts, ohms, all these good things. What's the temperature probe say when I have it plugged in? I think it plugs into voltage. Yeah, it's about right, 19 degrees. Ooh, it's going up. Nope, that looks good. Okay, let me uh, clip on these guys. Do a DC volt test real quick. Hang on, I'm a professional. There we go. Yep, spot on 5 volts. Let me see if I can set the range. Okay, that looks decent. Well, it's looking good so far. You know, it's not the most, it doesn't have the most digits in the world, but it, uh, you know, at least are somewhat accurate. Where am I going? Amps. We've got 400 milliamp in common. milliamp. Uh, I think mine is calibrated to... Let me check my... I got my little, my little sheet here. DC current so source. It should be 1.0004. So yeah, taking into account the fact that it's a bit cold, I'd say that's not too bad. Uh, let me switch this to AC and switch my... Yep, yeah, 1.11 that's right, because this doesn't have true RMS, that's actually, uh, that would show up as one on a true RMS meter. And I don't really have much else to test here, except uh, we'll do some resistance tests real quick. Resistance. Alright, this should be 100K. Always forget to do that. Yep. And <clears throat> 10K. Yep. 1K. Yep. And 100 ohm. Yep. Perfect. So, I have to say this seems to work pretty well so far. Uh, let me check AC volts. I didn't check AC volts. Yep, perfect. And frequency. I think there's a frequency mode. Maybe not. I was thinking there was a frequency mode. Microamps. Yep. 
spot on. Actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. No, I like this thing so far. Gotta turn off that damn beep. Hopefully I can. Uh, it's probably just hold up. Oh, duh, here's the uh, frequency. Yep, spot on. I went back and looked at the 17B non-plus version. And yeah, the um, controls are actually quite different. The uh, layout is different. And there's also a new min-max mode that the other one didn't have, the, the non-B. Um, or sorry, the non-plus. And uh, the backlight is now like there's a backlight button now I don't know if the normal 17B has a backlight uh, there's no button from what I can see so I'm just gonna assume that it no longer it didn't have a backlight so I think those are the two main differences the fact that it's got a backlight and the bigger screen and there's a min max button and there's just stuff's been rearranged oh and there's also this small LED with a high voltage indicator and I'm not sure what that triggers on if it's when it's getting close to the maximum range of a mode or if it's just telling you you're working with like 30 volts or more or something like that uh, when I had it on temperature for a while and then switched through the modes really quickly to off I saw it flash for a brief second but I haven't been able to get it to come back on and I don't understand the manual and I didn't see any pictures of it in the manual so I don't know what it does I'm going to pop the back on it and we'll just take a quick look inside. I don't think there's any real differences between it and the previous ones, or the, the regular 17B. It does have a little, little protective cover. And check out the stand. Yeah, it's usable. Now let me try to get a screwdriver does this pop off I don't want to try and force it nice yeah, this is a nice design. Comes with two energizers. These are... I think the other ones I've seen are made in Singapore. Yep, made in Singapore. Alright. Oh, of course, it's a Phillips. Number one, not a number two. Definitely feels like a self tapping screw. I gotta take this off. But how? Now, one thing it didn't come with is a magnetic latch for this, but I'm not sure if that's optional or not. It probably says it's optional in uh, a language I don't understand. Okay, it does have like, Phillips. Maybe I don't have to take out those three little ones. Those probably hold the um, battery compartment to the PCB inside. But we'll I'll see what happens when when I take this off. Yeah, these screws are kind of weird. Maybe it's just the wobble in the multimeter. I just don't like self-tapping screws. I think that's it. No fancy metal inserts for us here. What do you think this is? A Fluke 87? Actually, I think Fluke 87's... I think some of them are self-tapping. Maybe it's just some of them have the... You know, with the five revisions or so of the 87. I'd have to watch a teardown on it to remind myself. Okay... It just pops right out. Oh, that's a really nice design with the clip-on or the contact battery connectors. And yeah, it does look like I had to take out those 
little itty bitty screws down. <laughs> There's a calibration seal here that's not over a screw. It's covering this. It goes to this programming port, which, you know, fair enough, they use that to program the thing, but hello, you can just take the top off and, re and recalibrate it. That just doesn't make any sense. Oh well. Proper brand name fuse. Can't really see this one. This one's really wedged in there. Yeah, it's brand name too. When I initially looked at this board, I thought it was basically the same thing as the original 17B. But as I look at it a bit closer and look at the pictures of the older one, uh, it's pretty much a completely new board. I mean, aside from like little things like the buzzer being moved, the fuse has been changed. They're now both large fuses. Uh, the protection circuitry, the order has been changed. Uh, there's a group of MELF style resistors here instead of a resistor chain that's up here on the uh, non-plus version. And probably the biggest change is that there's now only one adjustment pot. Everything else is done through the configuration uh, ports here, the calibration ports. Uh, this is both good and bad. Uh, on one hand, you, it's probably more reliable out of the factory. But on the other hand, you can't go and change it. I mean, sure, someone's probably going to reverse engineer this so you can calibrate it yourself. But as it stands, you can't just bring up a little adjustment screwdriver and adjust it. So that's not great, but it's not terrible. Like, mine is pretty reasonable out of the box. So um, it's a four-layer board. You can see from the uh, little indicator. And, yeah, it's... Uh, Slightly different in that there's an EEPROM now, or an, an EEPROM, I should say. I don't think this was on the previous one. It's possible it was just in the uh, chip on board originally. Uh, not much else has changed. There's a teeny tiny package there. Uh, I think it says A24H UR8. I don't know what that is. I couldn't find any information on it. It's probably a power device of some kind but I'm not quite sure uh, and yeah I mean the layout's totally different even even all the circuit uh, the traces here are like completely different from the the pictures I've seen of the uh, standard B model so they clearly went through and redid a lot of it I mean I know they added new features to it but sometimes these are just disabled in software so there's not much of a physical change that's needed to enable these things, but it looks like they had to completely redo the board. And I don't think there's programming pins here, or these are possibly test points. I, I think they're labeled WP, so I'm not quite sure on that one. Okay, I've got it back together, and of course now for the most important test of a multimeter, the continuity test. That's pretty quick. I mean, it's not like instant, but and it latches. From what I can see, hey, for the price, it's definitely, definitely a good buy if you need a decent multimeter and don't want to buy a Fluke 87 for $500.